So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to look at the multiple choice questions on transport of materials across the cell membrane. Uh, my name is Mukhtar Ali Ikara from the Department of Biochemistry, Abuse Area. So, we are starting with question one. Question one says, what does the term selective permeability mean? A. Selective transport. B. Cell membrane. C. Selective permeability. D. Active transport. So the answer is selective transport. Because when you say selective permeability, it means it's the ability of the cell membrane to control what will get in and out of the cell. So in some cases, we have some materials that we need them in the cell, while some of the materials we don't longer need them in the cell. So therefore, is the work of the cell membrane to select what is important to the cell and what is not important to the cell. And that is the mean of selective permeability. Question two, what is the folar heat of a phospholipid made of E, fatty acid, B, vesicles, C, proteins, D, glycerol? So generally, phospholipids is actually made up of phosphatidic acid and a folar head group. The polar head group can be glycerol, it can be serine, it can be cysteine as an amino acid, and so many other folar head groups. So therefore, the correct answer to this option is glycerol. So therefore, glycerol is a type of polar head group that attached to the phosphatic acid to make a phospholipid, especially found in glycerophospholipid, meaning that the polar head group is glycerol. So the answer is glycerol. Question three, which biomolecules is important in determining the function of cell membrane? A, phospholipids, B, carbohydrates, C, proteins, D, waxes. The answer is proteins. So proteins is actually what determine the functions of each and every component of the cell. So therefore, the functions of the cell membrane depend on the types of the lipid that are found on the surface of the cell membrane. Then question four. In the phospholipid bilayer, which way do the non-polar cells face? So generally, uh, in the phospholipid bilayer, phospholipid layer is made up of polar component and non-polar component. So the polar component is always exterior, that is, is actually found on the surface or outside the cell membrane, while the uh, non polar head always remain hidden, that is, remain at the interior, so it moves or it's usually found as or toward the interior part of the phospholipid bilayer. So the answer is toward the interior, which is option A. Question 5. Where are the peripheral proteins attach? So generally in cell membrane, we have two types of uh, proteins. We have integral proteins and we have peripheral proteins. So the peripheral proteins usually found on E, the attached on E, the surface of the cell membrane B, the rough endoplasmic reticulum C, the Golgi apparatus D, the interior of the cell membrane. So the answer to this is the surface of the cell membrane. So generally, peripheral proteins are the proteins that parentially or that are facially attached to the cell membrane. So they usually attach to the surface of the cell membrane. That is why they are called peripheral. And then, of course, question six. What structures are included in the integral or transmembrane proteins? So most of the proteins that are found as integral or transmembrane proteins are A, forms, B, cell membranes, C, protein channels, and carrier proteins, D, basically. So the answer to these questions is protein channels and the carrier proteins. So most of the integral proteins that are found on the cell membrane or in the cell membrane, they are protein channels and the carrier proteins, which are actually fully participate in the transport of materials across the cell membrane. So the answer is protein channels and carrier proteins. So the integral protein or transmembrane proteins that are included in the structure of the cell membrane are usually in the form of protein channels and carrier proteins. Then question seven, 
what organic compound is often attached to integral proteins so generally there are uh, organic compounds that are attached to the integral proteins and that is what actually make it to form a complete uh complete a glyco or a complete conjugate so in this case actually the answer is carbohydrates so there are glycoproteins or glycoconjugate that are found attached or that are found on uh in the cell in the membrane or in the cell membrane so the molecules or the organic molecules that are attached to that integral proteins they are carbohydrates so the answer is carbohydrate question eight what is the main purpose of a cell e no real purpose b to house little tiny uh, elves c keep organisms structure d to maintain homeostasis so actually the major functions of the uh, cell is to make sure that the, it maintain homeostasis that is it regulate the internal environment so each and every cells work differently sometimes work in organized way in order to maintain the homeostasis conditions of the body so the answer is d homeostasis to maintain homeostasis then nine what is the base definition of equilibrium a slightly higher concentration outside the cell compared to the inside of the cell b equal amount of a cell in different parts of an organism c equal concentration of a substance inside and outside of the cell this slightly lower concentration inside the cell compared to the outside of the cell so generally the equilibrium position is maintaining a cell when the concentration of a substance inside and outside are equal so the answer is c there is equal concentration of a substance inside and outside of the cell it means that uh the cell or the equilibrium position of glucose is attained or is achieved when the amount of glucose inside and outside of the cells are equal for example in the case of glucose if it is in the case of sodium or potassium the concentration must be the same if the concentration is not the same it means that there must be transportation so that to maintain the equilibrium position the nine which one is the most important ways in which cells maintain hemostasis a keep the amount of the cytoplasm at a certain level b keep all the organs of the cells healthy c controlling what the organs in the cell do d controlling what moves across the cell membrane the answer is d that is by controlling what moves across the cell membrane and then uh the next thing is actually uh question 11 the molecules the molecules prepare to congregate in one area a through b force so generally the molecules do not always to gather themselves in one area either outside or inside of the cell they always prefer to move in and out of the cells in order to maintain equilibrium position of that particular molecules so the answer is pause then uh 12 do molecules stop moving when equilibrium is reached yes of course if a molecules reach equilibrium it means that the concentration inside and outside of the cells are equal then of course the equilibrium position is reached so once it is reached then the molecules will stop moving so the answer is true then 13 what are the three types of passive transports a simple diffusion Facilitate diffusion and forms. C. Exocytosis, endocytosis, forms. C. Exocytosis, endocytosis, osmosis. D. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. The answer is D. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. 14. When those simple diffusion occur. A when something moves from a higher concentration to a lower concentration randomly b when something moves from a lower concentration to a higher concentration c when something stays the same 
concentration. D. When something starts eat away at the cell membrane. So you see, in simple diffusion, simple diffusion occur when a substance moves from a region of higher concentration to a region where the concentration is lower. So the answer to this question is a level. But now I'm asking this question, please, in the comment section, what is the difference between simple diffusion and osmosis? I want to know the difference. Write it on the comment section of this video. Then question 15, which describe active transports? Which describe active transport to fire energy? A, when energy is needed to feed the cell. B, when no energy is needed to help substance move. C, when energy is needed to move a substance across the cell membrane. D, when small bits of energy are needed to make the cell membrane or to make the cell move more quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, in these questions, there is a, there is a little correction. Please, I wanted okay. you to correct the question because they said which describe active transport repair in it. So it's supposed to be which describe active transport. So active transports is actually happened when energy is needed to move the substance across the cell membrane. So that is what describe active transport. So what about passive transport? We did this in our previous lecture. Please also here I wanted you to describe the concept of active transport. So go on the comment section under 15, then describe passive transport. Then uh, 16. So the answer is, of course, C. So when energy is needed to move a substance across the cell membrane. Then 16, active transport requires energy through or cause. Yes, the answer is true. So what about passive transports? 17, is the sodium potassium pump one of the most important membrane pumps in animal cells? The answer is true. 18, does the so does the sodium potassium pump transport both sodium and potassium ions against their concentration gradient? The answer is true. Then 19. What do many cells use the sodium ions concentration to achieve? A. To provide the cell with ATP for energy to help the cell move. To move other substances such as glucose across the cell membrane need to assist in chemical reaction. So generally we have what you call a poor transport. So sometimes sodium is needed to move other substances like glucose. So I wanted you to describe which phenomenon is this. When glucose utilizes the transport of sodium across the cell membrane to move itself which phenomenon is that please i wanted you to write the answer to this on the comment section so the answer is move other substances such as glucose across the cell membrane so sodium ion move uh, uh, move across the cell membrane which also aids in the transport of other substances like glucose simultaneously across the cell. 20. What mode of active transport is shown in the pictures below? So look at this picture. If you look, this is the plasma membrane and this is of course the secretory. You can see that clearly this is the secretory product. If you look at the secretory product, you will see that the secretory product is actually bind to the membrane, then the membrane is embedded, then later it dissociates itself from the cell membrane and then it moves the substance into the cytoplasm. So the process is described as endocytosis because this, this is actually an example of bulk transport where substances move across the cell membrane so the answer is D. So ladies and gentlemen, this is actually the end to this video. And I hope you find this video very interesting. And if this is the first time you are coming to this YouTube channel, please subscribe and join my YouTube community. Bye-bye.